Out in the wild, toothless tigers are prey to predators. That basic truth holds when it comes to geopolitics. The Biden-Harris administration refuses to recognize that the U.S. is dangerously losing its credibility, and that invites attacks and big wars. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. Three events are unfolding that portray a weak-willed and irresolute U.S. They're the kind of incidents that create the international version of a black swan that is a shocking, unanticipated high-impact event. One cringeworthy episode is Washington's response to Venezuela's immensely unpopular dictator and communist Cuban puppet, Nicolas Maduro, blatantly stealing the country's recent presidential election. Maduro promised a fair contest last year in return for the U.S. easing crippling oil sanctions against this country's oil exports. The Biden-Harris team wanted the oil to help keep down U.S. gasoline prices in the run-up to our presidential election. Maduro has made Uncle Sam look like a chump. First, he barred his principal opponent from running. But a new credible candidate emerged. Amazingly, courageous pro-democracy activists monitored polling places and actually photographed tallies before they were sent into the government election agency. No surprise, Maduro lost by a landslide. Nonetheless, he claims he won. With the help from imported Cuban thugs, he is arresting thousands of protesters and tracking down those poll watchers. Washington should immediately have slapped on a total oil embargo and imposed individual sanctions on all of Maduro's henchmen and collaborators. But no, we essentially do nothing. A second ominous incident was the attack on a U.S. base in Iraq by an Iranian-supported militia group that wounded five soldiers and two military contractors. There had been two previous attacks there. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin harumph that were really upset. But so far, no retaliation. This is part of a sickening pattern. Since October, there have been 220 attacks on American military personnel and facilities from Iranian proxies. There have been only 10 retaliations. And that's the problem. We're always responding, always on defense. And this goes to the third episode, the ongoing attacks by the Houthis on shipping in the Red Sea, which has severely disrupted seagoing commerce. The Houthis are another Iranian military tentacle that is large and growing. That the U.S. hasn't eradicated this menace is a shocker. It invites more aggressive moves by our adversaries. Dealing with the Houthis finds our Navy constantly knocking down cheap but lethal drones with our expensive multi-million dollar missiles. We've burned through 800 so far. We are depleting inventories of missiles that we would need to defend Taiwan. Our fleet is getting worn down in this mission. We have stationed aircraft carriers and missile defense destroyers there for months and months. And the goal of reestablishing freedom of navigation there is no nearer to success than it was last fall when the assaults began. In fact, the Houthis are intensifying this campaign. In this situation, among other moves, the U.S. should attack the Iranian Navy and stop Iranian oil sales to China. That we're faced with the real likelihood of a major Mideast war and perhaps a black swan elsewhere is the ultimate damnation of what the Biden-Harris government has wrought. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again.